How you doing everybody? Adam from developphp.com here once again with another PHP and MySQL programming lesson. In this one we're going to demonstrate how to render out dynamic grid layouts. And this is a normal loop output here where everything comes out linear. Now using a little bit of conditional logic and a little bit of math we can render out a grid layout which will give you as many rows and cells in those rows as you like. So once it gets to a certain target number in this case 3, we tell the script to break line and make a new table row. Okay, today we're working in Notepad++ as our HTML text editor. And you'll notice I have a new file called gridexample.php set up here, and it's blank. I just created it, and here's where we're going to set up our example. And I'll use my online server to access my actual database at developphp.com to show you how it works. So let's... Uh, first put in our HTML and body tags like we would normally start a web page then inside of that I'm going to put an h3 tag that will allow my text to be a little bigger I'm going to type in dynamic dynamic PHP grid layout from a MySQL result set let's close that tag off okay now under that I'm going to echo out the PHP that we're going to assemble in a little script that we're going to put above that HTML tag on top. So let's just echo out a variable we're going to build called dynamic table. So let's call it for short D-Y-N-T-A-B-L-E. Close off the PHP block and there you go. Now right above this HTML tag we're going to put another PHP block get rid of that echo statement and now we have a PHP scripting block ready to go and we're going to access our database here I'm going to connect to the MySQL database make a little tiny query and then show you how to do a grid layout from that query now I'm going to pop in to line 2 there a little bit of code it's going to access my database and it's also going to run a MySQL query and start a variable output this is my output variable see that variable called dynamic table there that's the one that gets echoed out in the HTML that we just set up so let's explain this code to you real quick actually I'll just type in comments above it and I'll have this script available at developphp.com for people to copy and paste if you want to get at the actual working code that I produce here but being as uh, you can view this on full screen on YouTube or wherever you're watching it and it's crystal clear and high definition you should be able to just type it out because I might not get the code up for a couple days but I'll have the link in the videos description when I do get the code up alright here include database connection file that's what the line under this little code comment is doing or you can just put in your database connection lines right there but I prefer to use one central connect to my SQL file that I just include into any files that I'm going to use queries in. Now this next line is the SQL query to interact with information from our database. This next line we're setting up establish the output variable and we started with the beginnings of the table. So you can see this table starting tag here and that's how we establish the output variable and you'll notice that this dynamic table variable it gets appended to or compounded it gets added to as the script goes and you'll see the last little bit of code that gets put into that dynamic table variable is the closing row and the closing table tag and you see that little dot there that dot on that operator makes it compound or append to an existing set of information or string data within an established variable. If we didn't have that dot there, this table starting tag would get overwritten. It wouldn't even display inside the variable. So if we didn't have these dots here, the only thing this variable, when this script runs, would contain would be just this closing table row tag and this closing table tag. So you got to put that dot there. That dot signifies appending to or compounding, adding to a variable. 
you can see there's no dot on this one up here because that's where it's first established and I use this method some people will put echo right here on all these lines and place the script right down inside the HTML here but I prefer to assemble my scripting above my HTML gather all my information and then echo it out in one little variable in the HTML section just to keep my pages more organized but you very well could just take this whole little PHP block here and throw it right down there in your HTML okay what we have here is a while loop where all the information that's in the array coming from this query will get output or we can access it so what I'm doing is accessing it to compound into this variable for my little layout and I'm gathering the ID field and the member name field so you can see up in the select query it's saying select ID member name from member table this is my table name in the database order by ID field descending limit to 15 your limit could be whatever you want. So from that query, we'll have an array of information that will get output within this while loop. Or you may have a for loop where you're accessing data within an array. And the grid layout will still work in that circumstance. But basically within the loop where you're accessing the data or where you have the ability to handle the data is where you would put your grid layout logic. And you can see in this one, it's rendering out a table row for each person that's selected within this query for all 15. So let's run this script and I'll show you how it has a linear layout and then I'll show you a few lines you can add to make your grid layout. Okay, so I put that script up on my server and you can see the output that it renders. 15 items come out of the database. Now let's say if I want to take these 15 results and I want it to be a 3 by 5 grid instead of it being 15 rows high I want it to be five rows high and three columns across alright so using just a few lines of code here I'll show you how to take your linear result set output and make it grid so right here where we establish the output variable right before we do that let's establish another variable called I which will be our incremental number let's give it a value of zero now all you have to do is down in the loop before you put any data into your variable or you echo out any data you want to have an if and else condition statement so we're going to put if open close parentheses open curly brace close curly brace put an else condition or else statement open its curly brace and close its curly brace as well so now you have an if and else condition statement nest all set up and ready to go so we're going to say evaluate right here inside these parentheses we're going to say if I actually before we evaluate what I is the number let's iterate it so down inside of your loop at the very end put I plus plus and plus plus is a way just to add one okay now we're ready to set up the expression that we're going to use inside of this if condition statement and let's see if I can explain this well. What we're doing is seeing if i, which is the incremental number, through each pass in the loop. So each time in the loop, the first time it'll be a zero, the second time in the loop it'll be a one, the third pass in the loop it'll be a two, so on and so on and so on, until it gets to the 15 limit. Or if your index starts at zero, it might be a 14 limit. Zero to 14 if you have 15 results coming out. But basically what this is doing is evaluating if i each time in the pass in the loop pass is divisible by 3 which is our target number here. We're using the modulus operator which will evaluate whether or not this value of i each time in the loop will give a remainder from this target number to see if it's divisible. So if that expression is equal to 0 which means false, there is no remainder, we'll know if this i is either a 3, a 6, a 9, a 12, a 15, anything that's divisible by 3. So if you wanted your grid to be 5 across, you just make this a 5. If you wanted it 8 across, you make this an 8. So each time we get to a number that's divisible by 8, 8, 16, 
2432 it would break the the linear layout to help you make a grid so let's leave that on three and so all you have to do is take this dynamic variable here that was normally output there and control X and get that up inside of your if condition and what you want to do is make sure that in the else condition you are making no new table row so that's the logic if the number if the incremental number in the loop pass is divisible by three in our case here my target number is three we're gonna make a new row so if it's a three if it's a six if it's a nine it's gonna make a new table row otherwise if it's not divisible by three it's just gonna make a new table column and keep feeding a linear type layout so whatever programming language you're using yeah, let's type in a little comment here. I is divisible by our target number. So if I is divisible by our target number, in my case here, 3. In your case, it could be any number you want there. So now let's run this script. Save it, put it on our PHP enabled server, and let's go to it using a browser. Make it run, see what happens. Okay, here's the output we get now. So you can see it took those 15 values and it spread them out over a grid that we specified. You know, I specified the number three, so I have three columns and five rows. So using this number here, three, and your limit being divisible by three, you can make a nice grid for yourself. And this can work in any programming language you use. And the logic is, if the loop pass incremental number is divisible by any target number you set, then you do a little bit of different code than you normally would to break a linear layout and make a grid. All right, everybody, that's pretty much all the logic of it. If you have any problems with your code, maybe there's some syntax weird things happen from what you were copying in the video and you need to get to the script that I produced for this lesson, you can get it from developphp.com and the link for it will be in the video's description area. All right, so I hope that proves helpful to you guys, and if you know of anybody else that's asking how to do a grid layout or whatever, you can refer them to this video, because I explained the logic of it pretty good, and most people who offer you the script to show you how to do it won't explain the logic as in-depth like I have here. So somebody who programs in PHP and maybe ActionScript 3, they can take this same logic into ActionScript 3, or maybe if they work in JavaScript, whatever different programming language, you can take the logic of what was applied into many different programming languages. And we'll see you guys in the next lesson. Bye-bye.